So I'm here with Marco Polo, Tori, and Skyzu, and, yes, and there's a quick now, change going on right now. This is bar Barrel, Double Barrel Brothers. Yeah, yeah man. We need a new group. I was supposed to do the interview, but suddenly, hey. Oh, no, I got some good questions here, though. Ah, you see. It's, Marco, you're not a read now? It took me a couple of years, bro. I don't know what the fuck the first thing says. Oh, okay. oh shit. You ready? This is good. Oh. Man. Let's go back. You went on record saying John Coltrane's Love Supreme mm -hmm. is the greatest, is, is your favorite album in any genre of music. Mm -hmm. This is true? Very true. Very much true. Why? Uh, it's pretty epic. Nah, um. <laughs> I'll tell you, so. Okay. Now, uh. John Coltrane, Love Supreme, is, is my favorite album. Uh, it's a lot neck and neck with it. Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. You know, uh, Hard Silver song from my father. Wayne Shorter, Speak No Evil. Obviously, these are all jazz records, so you see what I be on. But just uh, the story behind a Love Supreme, if you know what it is, he was addicted to heroin like all the jazz artists in the 50s and 60s. And um, once he got off it, a Love Supreme was his thank you letter to God. So he was saying thank you in the letter, in, in the album, he was saying thank you in the letter for getting me off of it. So that, you know, just the symbolism behind it and the way he was able to tell a story without saying any words to tell a story. So. Awesome. Which is a contrast from Torre's favorite album, which is Mariah Carey's second studio album. <laughs> <laughs> Emotions? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the second studio. Oh man, Mariah Carey's second studio. I don't even know the name of that shit. Yo, what you got against Mariah, man? She's awesome. It's just random. It's funny. It's funny. I love Mariah. It's funny. Mariah I don't know what this is. I asked them about the collab with Michael Jackson. You had a collab with Michael Jackson? What? Michael that, Jackson? That's a tricky question. Michael though. Jackson, Michael Jackson, Jackson, Oh No? Mike. Oh yeah, you got it. So that'll like, doubt. Like, you know Oh No's name is Michael Jackson. A lot of people don't know that. His, oh shit. His real name, yeah. His and his name. brother Oh No yeah. producer? His name is yes. Michael Jackson. Amazing. So is my friend Michael These Jackson. These are good questions, I must say. These are my friend Michael Jackson, Jackson I went to high school with. His name is Michael Jackson too. So yeah, I know man Michael Jackson. What about Tito? Tito, yeah, he work at um, he work at the um, the Burger King mm -hmm. right on the block. Sandwich spot. All right, cool. Uh, number three is Sky Zoo. Chi Ali. Ali. Yeah, shout out to my man Chi. Yes. Shout out to my man Chi Ali. Uh, reason why I started rapping when I was nine years old. I remember being in the crib in Brooklyn. Video music box came on like every Saturday, and um, this video came on from this 15 year old kid. It's called Age Ain't Nothing But A Number by Chi Ali, and I was done, I was hooked. I was like, yeah, that's it. I wanna do that, I wanna look like that, I wanna move around like that, that's what I wanna be. And uh, I just started rhyming from there. So, shout out to Chi Ali. It's funny how things come full circle, because if you know my career, and you know what I've been doing, you know on my album, Dream Deferred, I got a record called Jansport Strings, and the hook is one time up for Chi Ali, because I could be in a box if I ain't see that screen. It keeps going on and on. And I actually got Chi on the remix of that record, and it was the first record he did once he got out of jail. So it's crazy how everything comes full circle. Him being on the record, the hook is based around him, and this, that, and the third, and it was nice. Which is dope because that's one of those people that people could forget his contribution and his story. Absolutely. So I, I feel like that was a, a really dope thing to do. Absolutely. Okay. Appreciate it. Well, uh, gentlemen, you had a record called The Aura, the new album. We yeah. still have it. It's still there. Yeah, it's still there. It, didn't, it didn't fade it didn't away. Share the mic. Share the mic. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Let me finish the question. While you're doing it. Uh, so there's co-production from DJ Premier and Ant Man Wonder. <laughs> Ant Man to Wonder. Do you care to expand on how that collaboration worked? Absolutely. So um, Ant Man Wonder is a great producer out of the lovely Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, and what Ant-Man does primarily is compose pieces of music that sound like samples. So instead of going to get a, a, a record that you got to sample and clear and, you know, break bread on the publishing side, we got with Ant-Man one that had him compose a few different samples and then we gave them the premiere to choose from. Premiere chose the sample that you hear in the aura, mm -hmm. chopped it up, threw some drums on it, yada, yada, yada. Once that was done, it went back to Ant-Man and Ant-Man finished composing a piece around it. So. It was, um, yeah, it was a, it was an actual collaboration. You know, it was one of the first times that Prem ever co-produced with somebody. Um, and primarily just because 
Ant Man is so amazing with how he does it. You know, I mean, the sound it feels like the sound it feels like a sample. It feels like the record should be crackling at the beginning, mm -hmm. like you put the, the the needle down on the vinyl. It's super dope. So you know, um, it was it was the first time that Ant Man got with Prem, and obviously the first time Prem worked with somebody in that capacity. But I think they both brought an amazing you know piece of piece of music together and put the puzzle together, mm -hmm. and then we jumped on and did our one two thing, and the story. Yeah, it is. Let me ask you a question that's not on the list. Mm -hmm. Forget about, I'm going to ask about favorite producer one each, but forget about Preen, Pete, Large, Dilla, The Obvious. Name a random producer that both of you love and no one would ever expect that, like, you just, that wouldn't be in a regular list of producers from, from back when you were coming up, even just being fans of music, that no one would expect you to say, like, yo, I check for his shit, you know, mm. beat-wise. Mm. For me, it's not random, and I'm definitely he definitely is an icon and a legend, but maybe somebody that people don't say enough. I'm going to tell you why he's special to me. It's DJ Scratch. For me, DJ Scratch is so ill because I never I always cared about production. Like, I thought the beats was dope, but I never cared about the actual art of producing and production and what it took to arrange and make some, you know, put it together until I heard DJ Scratch. I knew he was the ill DJ, and he also made he, he he sparked my interest in DJing as well. Two things that I really didn't have interest in. So you know, for me, Scratch is just up there. He's not somebody that comes up in every conversation, but if you go through his discography, you'd be like, damn, he really banged out a lot of crazy work. So definitely salute to DJ Scratch, somebody that made me raise the eyebrow and be like, damn, that production shit is really ill. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I have to say in that similar regard, definitely somebody like Clark. Like Clark Kent. Uh, I don't know. I feel like definitely Ye. But Ye comes up. Pharrell comes up. But guys like that, definitely. Uh, but Clark, though. Clark did Brooklyn's Clark. Finest, right? Yeah, yeah he absolutely. Clark did yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Brooklyn's Finest. Yeah, that was right right money, yeah. a bunch of shit. Yeah. The action, all sick. True? Uh huh. I just had one more question. Yes. The mic. So one more question is, uh, if it wasn't for Primo, you guys wouldn't be right here, right now. Am I right? Because when it comes to the, the previous is, tracks, so I'm, not, I'm not sure about that's it. A, that. That's that, that, that is a yes and no question. Okay. Um, contrary to popular belief, Click and Get It Done wasn't the first time Scott and I collaborated on the record. Right. It was probably the thing that people paid attention to initially. But um, we had we was already cool. We was already crew. We had already done records together. The first thing mm -hmm. we ever did was over a Pete Rock instrumental. Um, right? Yeah, the tum, tum, yeah, we did that. So, yeah, me and Scott had worked. I don't how, how, how prior to that? Oh, five. That was oh, five. Yeah, so probably like a year and a half. Probably like a year and a half to two years before we did Click and Get It Done. We had already worked together. We was already cool. Like, the way me and Scott met was via a record. <clears throat> My man Sean Don, of the Justice League, formerly of the Justice League, um, was putting a project together. He was friends with my DJ at the time. And he was friends with Sky at the time. He was putting a record together. He was like, y'all want to get both of these guys on it. Um, I had heard of Sky Zoo maybe two weeks prior to finding out about that through a mixtape he had out called uh, Greatest Flow on Earth. Mm -hmm. Sky heard my verse on the Sean Dawn joint. It was like, yeah. dude gets busy. This is back when we was on, t uh, what was them shit? Sidekicks. Yeah, we was on Sidekicks where you flip your phone up and shit. Mm -hmm. And um, I got his T-mail address. He got mine. And we just kind of start chopping it up and kicking it. Scott was like, yo, I'm working on the mixtape right now. He invited me out to his home studio at the time that was out in Long Island. Um, met me at the Long Island Railroad. And we just, that was it. Like, yeah. we just kicked it from there. We had a good bomb. We, there's not a lot of people in the music shit that you feel like a real affinity towards, like a real bond, like a real brotherhood. You know, and I, I'm blessed to say I have a few friends that I do make music with, but they really like my real friends. And me and Sky just was super cool. So, yeah, yeah the Prem record definitely helped. It did a lot for our careers, and it did a lot for people wanting to see us work together more. But we had already, you know, that was a friendship and a bond that had already started yeah, right absolutely. before that happened. Yeah, pretty much verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. We have one last question before we get out of here. Torre, it's for Torre, pardon me. Yeah. You've become somewhat of a selfie legend on Instagram. <laughs> well, I never what, kind of <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of advice would you give to up and coming, you know, future legendary selfie takers? <laughs> like tips, you know, angles, you know, like how do you get to that status? Like, is there preparation involved? You know, is are selfies the seventh element of hip hop? Like, <laughs> See, the key to a great selfie is all about angles and lighting. Like, this is too much light. So you're going to see all my imperfections. You know what I'm saying? 
If I was, if this was a selfie, come here, bring the camera here. If this was a selfie, I'd flip, flip, freak it like this. You get the light off, you know what I'm saying? You get your good side. You always turn your shit so you look slimmer, too. Don't go straight, because then you get the pie face. Turn your shit and slant a little bit. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Look, look at the light. Look at the light. You get the jawline. The head camouflages a lot of it. Yo, it's angles to this shit, baby. Uh -huh. Levels. Take it, take it from the selfie master. You know what I mean? <laughs> Young selfie. Sky, you, know you want to chime in on this? Or you letting tour? No, I think that's good stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. I think another key to uh, having a great selfie is having a, a, a beautiful, slim but curvy woman in the background of the selfie. Right? But, it, but isn't selfie self? One self, self is an nah, individual nah. self, like that's singular. Nah. Yeah, but it can be people or things floating around in the background. It's a ussy if both of y'all looking in the camera together, then that's a ussy. Yeah. But if you looking together, you know, you looking straight on, and then oh, and a couple people in the background back imagery. photo bombing, right, but the right. photo bomb look like Tahiri or something. That's a great selfie. You know I know about the scenario. That's kind of a remix yeah, to the selfie. You know, yeah. Listen, yeah. baby, you gotta. You gotta learn how to adapt and change with the times. You feel me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't just be selfish and take a selfie by yourself. What right. is that? You know, get some curvaceousness in the some background. Naked women in the background. Yeah. You know some money. Mean? A fresh pedicure hanging off the side of mm -hmm. the bed. You know, no. 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 Scantily yeah. clad. Oh, Not my pedicure. Okay, I was gonna say. Wait, Wait you had, yo, cause yo, no, let me chime in. Cause you had a. You had a, a beach shot where you were wearing sandals. Ninety times it was. They, first of all, they call flip flops, my G. Okay, sandals, flip flops, you know same category. Sandals is for bitches. You feel me? Men's. men's let me tell you. Let me tell you the story behind that. No I got six hundred. I got six hundred and eighty-nine pictures with me like chilling on. Cause I do. I do this vacation thing. I do it often. I deserve it. You know. So I be on wild beaches. I be by poolsides and shit like that. And every time I post a joint, I got a fresh pee on. Cause I do that too. And people. A bunch of my female friends are like, well, why you always got shoes on? You in Rio, you on the beach, why you got shoes on? You by the pool, why you got yeah, shoes man. on? And I was man. like, yo, I was like, as a grown ass man, I don't respect scrolling my timeline and seeing nobody feet. I don't want to see your feet, my nigga. You feel me? So I was, um, who was I at just recently? I don't know, I was somewhere good with good weather and shit. And I had my joints on. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to go for it. But what I did was, I used the filter. So you use the filter, you fade out your feet. Oh, All you see is the jump man on the logo. So that's what I did. It wasn't like I was just up there with my feet on the ground. That would be disrespectful. Oh, shit. We have a Paul Brown in the house. Oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, no, my least favorite producer, <laughs> Apollo Brown. No. <laughs> I'm going to Yo, what's the name of my group? Um, Barrel Heroes? Ugly Barrels? Yeah, Barrel uh Barrow Heroes. Hero, Hero Brothers. Yeah, Hero Brothers. Hero the name Brothers. of the new group is Hero Brothers. Hero Brothers. There's a sandwich shop opening soon. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that was quick. You witty. That was quick. That was quick. Yeah. For somebody who only finished grade three in Canada, you <laughs> Yo, that was right quick. Yeah. Yeah. Hero Brothers. Damn, that sounded aggressive. Important to ask. That sounded and aggressive. It definitely right didn't there. go the way you thought it would. No, it was all good. Cut Marco in on a piece of the, you know, the two percent or whatever it is. Seven percent, baby. <laughs> seven percent. Shout out to Marco Polo on the seven percent nation. DJ Skins, seven. Young Jerry, Ginger Pants, Ginger Pants, and Tim. The God of Science and Technology. <laughs> is that the God of Skype. The God of Skype. The God of Math and Science. It's That's good. The God of Information. There's a lot. Oh, it's man God to Earths. Mm -hmm. Who's the God of Skype? That should be you. That is me. Yeah. I didn't young, say it, yeah. but you said it. Young, so we have Instagram over here and Scott over here. Yeah, 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 I that's take that one. <laughs> Why do you have the glow in the dark? All right. Um, some new gave to me. Like previous month. He was like, you know what that means? He was like, yo, you want to wear my mask? I was like, that shit's very nice. Weird, it's very nice. It's, 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 it's gonna fit. I'm not gonna put it on my face though. It's gonna fit your face. Nah, wash well, it first. Though. Right. It's an alcohol. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's way better. You should do the set when we go to all other cities wearing that shit. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, cool. I went to the bathroom every day. Yo. One time. Apollo. Yo. Would you? Would you? Would you? Um. If we do an encore tonight, it would be um. Got it from here. Would you want to come out on the stage and? Do you, the thing you do when you be bopping, you, like, you pop a different kind of way to your own beats. I noticed that. When other people shit is on, you be like, mm. or yeah, shit, you or got a different or kind of, wow. you got a different kind of pop. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, yeah, I'm there. Okay. You just got a freestyle. Yo. Ah, uh, stop it. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the god of freestyle, so I'm just playing. 
So you gonna freestyle? I was doing the beat. You were supposed to rap. But you didn't know how to freestyle. Oh, man. So let me get my Dougie Fresh on. Right, go ahead and do it. I'm just doing freaks. I'm just doing freaks. Shout out to Little Vicious. When I lived, when I lived in Flatbush, Little Vicious lived downstairs for me when we was kids and all that. Shout out to Little Vicious. Oh, freaks and all so that. Little Vicious looked freaks. up to you. Nah, nah. Looked up to you. I mean, literally out the window. Little no sky coming down. Nah. Yeah, shout out to Little Vicious, Kate and Ave, Church Ave. And all I went to see a Little it's Vicious video I cut from you. school. Cut, cut out of school to go see the it's Freaks video they was doing in Coney Island. See? And I got caught by Troy officers. And they took us to this high school. And when, we, when me and my friends walked into high school, they was like, we're going to call your parents and tell them you cut school. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the, uh, the, the school safety agent. It was my Uncle Tyrone. He was going <laughs> to sneak out the back door. There you go. I'm sorry, Mom. That's why I don't know shit geography. It was probably that day. It was probably yeah. geography day. Might have been. When I cut class. Lesson in that is don't cut class, kids. Go to school and learn. Yeah. Don't you go to videos. I said, peace and love. Battle Brothers, Sky Zoo, Torrey. In stores right now, Absolutely. online right now. Go copy. Bit Torrent. Did it. Nah, not <laughs> Bit Rap Golf Fathers. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, what's the other shit you said? Hip Hop Bootleggers. Hip Hop Bootleggers. That's a real site. Go get that. Walgreens.com. <laughs> Walgreens.com. Oh, Hip Hop Store.pl. <laughs> Put the dude on it. Yeah, with the dude DJ. <laughs> Hip hop songs, that the other. He'd be a dude with a hat backwards. Mm -hmm. He had a baggy blue jeans with the, with the stitching you can uh -huh. see in the Timberlands. <laughs> they don't be Tim's, they be weak colored shoe boots. Yo, peace now, we appreciate y'all. Hip hop camp 2014, Bower Brothers is double with the monsters. Yeah. Yeah, peace out to Zulu Nation, Chapter Poland, Blender Art, and Mobilizatia. This was Zulu? Ah, oh, we fucked all that. <laughs> <laughs>